settlement. There is no peace. So if you really pay attention, society today is in a place of unrest. Amen. Amen. A sleeping body doesn't mean a sleeping mind. Mm -hmm. People are in unrest today. Just because it seems as though their hands are folded, just because they're taking a vacation, does not necessarily mean that they're at rest. That's right. We, we do many things to try to find a way to really ease our minds, but how many know that some of the things that we've tried, even in the past, brought us no rest? No rest. Amen. So today the place is in, a, uh, is in an unrest. Now, we, we're talking about Peter here. Peter finds himself, according to the scriptures, he finds himself being arrested. Herod now arrested. He stretched forth his hands, as the word of God says, and he began to uh, lay his hands on the church. Not the building, but he began to lay his hands on the church. And so he took James and he slew James, or he killed James, and, and Herod found out that when he did this, it really pleased the Jews. How many know that you got friends and loved ones that really love to throw you under the bus because it pleases somebody Amen. else? Amen. Amen. You got people today that will really Amen. like to see you go down, do bad, come on. Amen. Like They like to see your life go the wrong way, and then when they find out that it pleases somebody, they like to try to do it to somebody else. That's right. It's really called bullying because they do it in school today. If you're not popular, and, and then, then somebody comes and mess with you because the other people laugh at what you do, then they try to find somebody else to mess mess with. Mm. But how many know that, that no matter what the devil tries to do, God always has a way out Amen. for his people. Amen. Amen. And, so, and so society then, Herod thought that what he would do, he would lay his hands on Peter thinking that, you know, if I put my hands on Peter, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to really please the Jews. He didn't say the Gentiles, he said the Jews. He said the Jews. In other words, they were trying to shut down Jesus from the very beginning. Right. And so now the disciples are preaching the gospel. How many are not ashamed of the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ? Amen. You will have an enemy out there that is not going to like the fact that you are speaking Jesus. They're going to tell you to shut your books. They're going to tell you not to pray in the lobby. They're going to tell you not to pray on your job. But how many know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. For it is the power power of God, what? Unto salvation. Amen. And so Peter was kept in an inner chambers, chained between two guards. And now he is sitting there, and the reason why he's there is because he's preaching the gospel. And number two is because Herod stretched forth his hand thinking that if he gets Peter, then he can shut it down. But I mean, the gates of hell can't prevail against they the church prevail. of God. Amen. So he killed James, and now the disciples... Well, were, the disciples were causing an uproar among the Jews and the politician by preaching Jesus Christ. So when the king killed James, he saw that it pleased the people, and now he grabs him. And so therefore, he thought that it would please them more, even if I if I kill Peter, if I can just kill him, everything is going to be all right. I'm going to be popular. Sometimes people will try to get you down. Some people will try to knock right. you down yes, to make themselves look good. Amen. Herod wanted to be popular Amen. with the Jews, not just with the Gentiles, but he wanted to have favor with the Jews. And so, therefore, some people will try to have a, a use your life or use you so that they can be popular themselves. Anybody understand what Amen. I'm talking about? Amen. But this is where the Lord really began to really minister to me. And that is in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the Bible speaks about arrest. A rest. I'm going to say rest. rest. The Bible speaks about now God desired. There is a rest that remains for the people of God. And so I looked at this and I said, Lord, what do you mean? It's not the rest that the world would give. Jesus said at one time, he says, this joy that I give to you, the world is not giving it to you. But the joy I give to you is going to help you through. And so Jesus, the word of God is saying to us today, the rest that I'm giving to you is not from the world. Mm -hmm. How many wants a rest from the Lord? Amen. 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 But now, what stuck out more than anything, while Peter was in prison, it wasn't the fact that he was in the <laughs> inner prison. It wasn't the fact that two guards or four guards were on each side. It wasn't the fact that... That 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 you know he was in all I mean in darkness that 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 didn't really get to me, but what really got to me was when the angels came the church was praying for Peter, but when the angels came they found Peter sleeping. Mm -hmm. 
How in the world can you sleep when death is knocking at your door? When when they when the the Bible says when the angel got there, the angel smote Peter on the side. Now, if that would have been us, tell the truth, if that would have been us, we would have been up screaming, yelling, praying, amen. Yes, we'd have been pacing back and forth because we just saw James get killed. So now, you know, all of a sudden, you know, my life is threatened. How many have been in a place where death would knock at your amen. door? Anybody understand amen. what I'm saying? Amen. Whether it be through sickness, whether it be through a car that almost amen. hit you, whether it be through a bullet that's supposed to come out of the chambers, but it didn't come out. Come on. Amen. Whether it was a knife, whether it was someone that was trying to kill you by making you lose your job, lose your family. Come on, somebody. Amen. Um, and, and so yet Peter was found sleeping. He was found sleeping. He was found sleeping. And the word rest came to my mind. Why was Peter sleeping between four gods in an inner chamber knowing the next day he's about to die? Because Peter understood the rest of God. Amen. The Bible, let, let's turn to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I want to read this. I'm not going to preach today. I'm just going to talk. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Hebrews, the uh, fourth chapter. Turn with me. Stay with me. Amen. Certain place on the seventh day of this wide. It says, listen to this. And God did rest the seventh day from all of his works. It's speaking about when God created the earth. It says that on the seventh day, he rested. Now, I know we understand this, but how many know that God wasn't tired? Amen. God came to a place of settlement about all that he did. It wasn't the creation of all things he made, Brother Roberts, in the seventh day. It was all that he had planned until the end of time. Mm -hmm. In other words, when God rested on the seventh day, everything that he had set in motion, every person that was to be born, every event that was to happen, God rested because he saw thousands of years in the future of the end of his plan. So he rested. Mm -hmm. Rest means he settled himself. Rested means that he was not agitated. Rested means that he was at peace. He rested. So he wasn't weary in the sense that we get physically tired, but he was rested. Somebody say rested. Rest. In other words, he was in a state where nothing could disturb him. Nothing could bother him. So therefore, he knew that all the troubles would come. He knew that the man would fall. He knew that the people would do wrong. He knew that everybody would do wrong. But yet on the seventh day, God rested. He yeah. found a place within his spirit that nothing would disturb him. Amen. Amen. How many would like to be in a place where nothing disturbs Amen. you? Amen. Amen. The word of God says, and in this place it says, and verse 5, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. What is the rest of God? Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached, enter not in because of unbelief. Talking about the children of Israel, they did not enter into God's rest because of their unbelief. Somebody say unbelief. Unbelief, unbelief. is different than doubt. I have to explain that to you. Unbelief is different than doubt. You can doubt something and yet God can encourage you to know or confident to know that what he said is true. Unbelief is I don't believe it at all. It's not a doubt. I just don't believe it at all. But because they did not believe God would bring them to a promised land, because they didn't believe God can keep them in the wilderness, they, not, they, not, they did not ever enter into the promised land. I'm here to encourage you. Just because you are where you are, don't let unbelief settle in your heart. God has a rest for the people of Amen. God. God has a place that he wants to put Hallelujah. you that no matter what's going on in your life, Amen. you will be okay. Amen. Stop looking at the things that are around you. Stop looking at the things that are happening to you, but look at what God has said in his word and hold on to that word. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Your deliverance is here. Your deliverance is here. The scripture says in verse 7, it says, again, he limit a certain day saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it has said, today, if you will hear my, his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? Now listen, verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Somebody say, there remains, there remains. a rest. For me. For me. It's not the rest by what you define it. I have to get that clear. That in other words, there are people today that are looking for a place of rest, but they haven't found it yet. 
They, they, there's no place where they're looking. They're looking at houses. They're looking at uh, clothes. They're looking at money. They're looking at things. And they feel that when they get those things, they have rest. Or when I come home, or as I said earlier, when you take a vacation from your job, you may think that it is rest. Mm. So now here's the question. How do you know when you have rest? Mm. How is it that you know that you really are resting in God? And the only way that you can know that you're resting in God when there's chaos going on all around you. The only way that you can know that you really are resting in God is when you look up and you open your eyes and hell is breaking loose all around you. Come on, somebody. The only way you're going to know that God is really giving you rest is when you step out of bed and you face resistance before you get out of the door. Peter, Peter now begins to understand this when they were on the boat and they were trying to get to the other side and Jesus was found sleeping down and below the ship. All of a sudden they looked at Jesus and said, don't you care? That we, aren't you concerned that we might die in this storm? But see, Jesus understood if you have a rest in God, it doesn't matter what kind of storm you're going through, you're going to be all right. And so we, we, we're the same way. We are looking on the outside thinking that outside is supposed to give us rest. But how many know that your, your rest comes from the almighty God? Amen. Amen. Peter finally understood what Jesus was saying when he was sleeping in between two enemies. He realized that it wasn't about what was on the outside of him. What mattered was what was on the inside of him. I, I'm, I'm here to encourage. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who it's for. But stop letting outside storms disturb your rest. When God puts you in a place of peace, just know that it doesn't matter what's going on. You can still yet praise him. Amen. So the storm is tossing the boat that Peter and them on. Jesus is asleep. He don't hear the noise. He don't hear the thunder. He don't hear the things that's really going on. He don't hear that. But but the the, the, the spirit of the Lord is really just really moving in my heart that I, I see a lot of God's people that are being disturbed. So maybe we haven't entered to that rest that remains for us. Into the rest, Lord. Peter found himself between two gods <laughs> facing death. Mm -hmm. I know what Jesus told him. And sometimes God can give us a vision, a dream. Let me let me back up just a little bit here. See, Jesus told Peter, Peter, there's going to come a day when you're going to stretch forth your arms. Jesus. And they're going to take you because you're going to be old. And they're going to take you to a place you don't want to go. Mm. Now, Peter hadn't got there yet. But he finds himself between two enemies. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Sometimes God will allow you to be in the midst of your enemies to see if you would rest in him. Jesus. Are y'all with me? Yes. So Peter was not worried because he believed the word of God. And let me just, I'm, I'm going to slow this down. I want you to get this. And that is, sometimes we forget the peace of God and the rest of God. And we look at our situation and we are panicking and we are disturbed. And it bothers us. Stop letting outside events disturb your peace on the inside. And if we listen to us for a while, we'll find out that we're allowing things. We're allowing family. We're allowing jobs. Is this helping anybody in here? Yes. We're allowing jobs. We're allowing family. We're allowing <laughs> things to really disturb. But Peter, when the angels got there, it says that Peter wasn't pacing the floor. It didn't say Peter was up, you know, tell, hey, go find uh, somebody. No, it says that they, he was found what? Sleep. 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 When you have a rest in God, no matter what's going on in your life, mom. It's not going to bother you. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. There, there's a place that God can put us that the enemy can't touch us. Amen. He says that, that David said that he is my buckler and my shield. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is the place that where I hide, the enemy can't find me. Come on, somebody. Amen. And even though I am between my enemies, still yet I am not with my enemies. Amen. Though Peter was sleeping between two soldiers that was holding him, it wasn't holding his rest a hostage. It wasn't holding his peace hostage. Peter had... He was asleep, y'all. Resting. How many of us, if we be honest, how many of us, if we were on death row, would be resting? How many of us would be resting if we had an eviction notice and you had to get out yesterday? How many of us would be resting if you spent your last dollar and they're about to cut the bills off? Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many would be resting if they come knocking at your door and they're taking your car? How many would really be at rest or would we panic? Or will we lose it? Or will we now? Or, now Peter was a cusser. Now 
Peter was a cuss. He, he loved cutting ears off. But this time, Peter was what? Sleep. Sleep. Amen. And the reason why he was sleep was because he had finally understood the rest of God. Somebody say the rest of God. Amen. The Bible says there remaineth of our hearts today are too troubled. We're too worried. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled, but neither let it be afraid. Didn't know what the word of God says? Somebody say, let not your heart, let not let your heart be troubled. Be neither neither let, it be let it be afraid. So, so, so when the, the angels got there and began to uh, uh, loose Peter up and say, listen, I want you to, I want you to wake up. It wasn't like Peter was, you know, with his eyes open, hoping somebody would break him out of prison. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Today Amen. we look for people to break us out of things. Amen. We look for the job to break us out of our situation. Y'all not going to say amen, but amen. that's all right. Amen, Bishop. We look for relationships. We look for things. We look for people to break us out of things. But how many know that there is a rest Amen. for the people of the Lord? Amen. The Lord, the Lord gives you a, pe a, a place of peace. This is, I told you it was a short message. Amen. Listen here. What really stood out to me, and that is, and I thank God for it, is that the, every day that we wake up, there's going to always be some bad news. We're not in heaven yet. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. As long as we're on this earth, there's going to always be something. The devil's going to always be doing something, you know, to try to agitate, to try to mess with. Amen. He, does, he don't want you to step into your destiny. He doesn't want you to step into your future. He just desires for you to stay in bed. Don't get out of bed. Don't reach yes. forward. Stay That's in your comfort right. zone. Don't step forward. But how many know that when the angel came and he smote Peter on the side and said, come on, let's get up. He told Peter to put on your clothes because we got somewhere right. to go. That's right. Amen. God That's right. got somewhere for the people right. of God Amen. to go. So are y'all ready Jesus. to go to the place where God is sending you Amen. to go? Amen. Hallelujah. Or are you worried about the rest? Are you disturbed? Because God God will give you a peace that you can sleep on the same boat that he slept on and you don't have to worry about the, the thunderstorm. You know, the thunderstorms can be really loud. Amen. Do you not know that when we were sitting there, we were sitting there the other day and the thunderstorm came about, it was a, 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 it was a real powerful storm. And Max, as big as he is, we have an English master, mm -hmm. he got up from the living room and ran into the bedroom yes. because he was scared of the rolling thunder. Yes. And so, and so we do the same thing when we hear the rolling thunder of what the devil would do to us or what the enemy would try to do to us. We try to run and hide. Amen. But when you have the rest of God, when you have the peace of God abiding in your heart, you can hear the thunder and just be at peace. Amen. Have you ever woke up one day? Have you ever woke up and, and somebody said to you, did you hear all that thunder last night? Amen. Did you ever, ever have that happen to you? Yes. And you wake up, what, it was raining last night? I must have really been asleep. Amen. Amen. And so the rest of God, the Spirit of God, He says that He is the Prince of Peace. He is the everlasting Father. He is the wonderful counselor. Let him counsel your heart today. The message is simple. Let the rest of God step into the rest of God. Not our limited rest, but step into his eternal rest. Why are we always bothered? Why are we always troubled? Why is there always things trying to get to us? It's because he's trying to disturb your rest. Amen. Amen. That's yeah. why Jesus says, I'm going to give you joy. Not like the world is giving it to you, but I'm going to give you joy so that you can be able to endure. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. You know you're okay when, when you find out that, that, that they're going to come and evict you, that something is going to happen or be taken away from you, and they, and they knock at your door in your sleep. Mm. Amen. You know when you're at rest, when the, you hear on your job that you might get fired, but you're okay and you're sitting there, you're smiling. Anybody with me? Amen. In other Hallelujah. words, it, nothing will bother you when Jesus is on your side. Amen. Nothing will bother you when you got God on your side. Come Amen. on, somebody. Amen. When he's your defense, it does not matter what you Amen. lose or gain in this world. Amen. It doesn't matter. Yes, Lord. So when you when they come to you and they tell you something bad, you're smiling. Why are you smiling? Because I'm in his rest. In his Amen. Yeah. Do you expect me to panic? Do you expect me to pull my hair out? Do you expect me to have a nervous breakdown? No, I am in the rest of God. I, I know all I got to do is wake up and say, peace, be, be still. still. The reason why I can say peace, be still out there, because there's a still peace in me. I'm not moved or bothered by what's going on out there, because God has has me covered. Amen. 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 I don't have to live every day on what ifs. Ooh, my 
I don't have to take no thought for tomorrow because God says he already got me covered for my tomorrow. Amen. Even if I don't know all the details about what God is going to do, he says, pray, ask, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Hallelujah. but ask and I give all things unto you. Amen. So if I don't see it, doesn't mean it's not going to be. I'm at rest. Amen. I'm sitting at home realizing that my money are, is getting fun, you know, depleted. I'm sitting there. My car is breaking down. Come on, somebody. My children is acting up, but my body is acting up. I'm sitting, we're facing some different things today, but if you have the rest of God in your spirit, nothing is going to move you. Amen. People are going to have to wake you up and say, didn't, didn't, you, didn't you hear that they're going to cut your lights off? Right. Amen. Didn't, didn't, didn't you just hear somebody don't like you no more? Mm. Didn't, didn't you just hear that they're going to try to ambush you? Didn't you just hear that the, that the world is trying to be against you and you'll smile? You'll be at peace. Rest. Come on, somebody. Yes. If you don't have it, then, then guess what? If you're not in the midst of chaos, if you're not in the midst of, of resistance, then you don't have peace. That means you must be a part of the chaos. Whoa. Must be part of the resistance. Whoa. But I'd rather be the one sleeping in the bottom of the ship. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. I'd rather be the one, no matter if he, listen, Psalms 23 says, and he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I can sit and eat in front of my enemies because I'm I'm at rest. I'm not threatened by the presence of my enemies because I'm at rest. You can chain yourself to me, but you're not holding me. See, 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 Peter was in prison. He was deep in the prison, but he wasn't worried about where he was. He was where he was concerned about what was on the inside of his heart. Uh, there are people that are concerned about what's around them. If I don't have this or that, if I, if I don't do it this way, but how many know if you just have Christ on the inside of your heart, it it makes the difference. It does. Amen. Somebody say, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Your deliverance, Your deliverance is, here. is here. That's when you know you're at rest. Yes. That's when you know you're at peace. Yes. When somebody has to come and wake you up. And, and tell you there's a storm going on. Wow. They have to wake you up and tell you that you're about to lose something. And they find you sleeping. They look at you strange. And they say, don't you realize what's about to happen to you, Peter? You're about to die. <laughs> you're about to be beheaded. Jesus. Peter sleeps, snoring. Nobody sleeps on death row. Mm -mm. The anxiety of reaching that day alone bothers them. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Some of some people don't want to look get out of the bed. Some people don't even want to think far in the future because the anxiety of something may not happen right. Mm. May not go. Is this helping anybody Amen. today? Yes, Amen. it is. And if it's not for the day, just live long enough. I, the Lord's giving me messages that, that you don't get until the end of the week. Amen. So He's telling us today, whatever whatever's about to happen in this world, just stay in a place of rest. Amen. 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 Let, let when my angels come and, 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 and smoke you on the side, let them be waking you up instead of calming you down. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 <laughs> let, let, let the angels, when they come and tell you to come on, they got to tell you to put your clothes on, just get ready because you're so rested Jesus. in the Lord. Amen. That the Amen. threats of the enemy don't bother you. Don't bother that if you have purpose in you, death can't kill it. Ooh, when Amen. you know that God has got something for you to do, you can rest. Yes. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Amen. Amen. Remember that. Remember that sermon. I don't look like what I've been through. Amen. You may not know my story. I may not look like I've been through hell, but if I tell you my story, you can understand that it's only by the power of God that He Amen. kept us. Amen. I want y'all to be encouraged today. I want the young people to be encouraged, even though they're doing this Ouija board and calling this Charlie uh, at, at the school and it's happening all over. I want you to do this. You call on the name of your God. Jesus. You call. You put your Bible. You put your cross on the table. And say, I'm going to call Jesus while you call Charlie. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to call Jesus while you call Charlie. Ooh, because I'm at rest. I'm not worried about Charlie because Charlie can't do can't nothing do to nothing. me. But I know a God that can do everything Amen. and Charlie can't do nothing about it. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, that demon has to acknowledge that Jesus Christ Lord. is Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't panic because society is changing the economical recession and all that. Don't don't let that don't let that bring you to a panic. Rest. That's why I say rest. 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 Wu and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This rest, this rest is spiritual. Amen. It's nothing to do with vacation. Amen. It has nothing Amen. to do with isolating yourself. I don't want to be bothered with nobody. Mm. It's not what it has to do. You, you, you know, if you have really have the rest of God, you could be you could be in the midst of whatever's going on and it don't bother you. Mm -hmm. Peace. 
Amen. In my book, I wrote this, and I'm coming to a close. In my book, I wrote this, and I wrote that a king required a painter to paint him a picture of peace. And so this artist was well known, who did what the king did. And so he went and he painted this elaborate hills with <laughs> flowers and the sun ever was so gently setting on the uh, uh, the setting on the west and and the, this this plush green grass and so he brought it to the king and the king says that's not peace mm, mm, mm. go back and do it again and if you don't do it right I might cut your head off mm. so it bothered the painter because he was trying to figure out what this king want that looked like peace. So he went back, he said, so then he sat down and he drew a beach and pretty sand and the umbrella and, then, you know, the, the, the seagulls and the waves of the water and the, the temperature was also right, kids playing in the sand. And, you know, he just drew all of these different things. He said, I know the king is going to like this. So he takes a picture to the king and the king looked at it and said, that's not peace. That's not peace. You have one more time. And if you don't do it, I'm going to cut your head off. So now the pain is really disturbed. So now he gets down and he starts praying. He started asking God, Lord, I don't understand. I'm trying to paint the king something that represents peace. And so he got an epiphany, a revelation, an illumination from the Holy Spirit. And he began to paint. And so he took the picture that he had painted, hoping and praying and believing that the illumination he got would be acceptable. So he set it before the king, pulled the covers from off the paint. And, and the king said, now that's peace. And so what he did was... The painter began to draw a tree. Mm -hmm. And as he drew the tree, he drew dark clouds. And he, drew, he, he painted lightning coming from the clouds. He drew the tree bent all the way over, almost touching the ground. He, bent, he, he painted the winds blowing the trees back and forth. But the tree that was almost bent over and breaking, there was a little nest in that tree. And some birds and chicks that were asleep. And the king says, that's peace. Through the midst of the storm, through the winds that are blowing, the lightning that's thrashing, the tree bending all the way over, and these little chicks are asleep in the nest. God says that this is what I want to do for you. I desire for you to enter into my rest. That no matter how strong the storms come, no matter how the lightning may thrash, no matter how much things may bend, listen, in your life. He says, I will give you peace in the midst of your storm. That mother would have to wake up those chicks in order to feed those chicks in the midst of the storm. How can you sleep in the midst of something that's going on in your life? Get into the place of rest. Amen. Amen. Let God bring ease to your spirit. We have a lot of people that are...